Ladies and gents, I'm back with another video for you today. I'm shifting gears a little bit today, focusing on a niche house, Wilhelm Parfumery, a fragrance house that I first discovered at Barney's here in San Francisco, probably going back to five to six years ago. So I remember first seeing their bottles and how flat they were and thinking to myself, these bottles will not tip over because they are so flat, so round, not long and vertical and wobbly, you know? Perfect, perfect bottles if you're afraid of your bottles tipping over. But great collection of fragrances, fragrances created uh, by Jerome Epinay. At least I think he's created most of the fragrances, if not all. The ones I'm t talking about today are created by Jerome Epinay. And if you don't know this perfumer, he's done fragrances for, I believe, uh, Byredo. He's done fragrances for Diptyque. He's even done fragrances for Floral Street. So great fragrances, great collection of, uh, you know, notes and things like that for these uh, particular fragrances and the fragrances are all sold at Twisted Lily uh, which I have a discount code for in the info box it's Perfume Guy 10 so either way guys if you want to find out about uh, Wilhelm Perfumery in today's video of top seven Wilhelm Perfumery fragrances all ranked then please stay tuned Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian, and yes, today I'm talking about Wilhelm Perfumery. And yeah, today uh, I'm doing seven fragrances, seven of my favorites, and I've spoken a, a bit here and there about this house. In fact, I have a full review of Mooring Chess, and then I've also featured a Lilac a Day many times in different videos. I absolutely love that fragrance. And in fact, I really, really love the fragrances. There's something soothing and comforting about these fragrances. And they're just a perfectly balanced smells, you know? Not overwhelming, not beast mode. These are not fragrances that you're going to say uh, are, you know, beast mode. They're not fragrances that are going to spray on and you're going to smell them tw 24 hours later and things like that. But some of the most amazing smells and fragrances, I think, and there is a little bit of a theme with some of the fragrances, which I'll let you know what it is. But before I get to the fragrances, if this is your first time tuning into the channel and you still haven't subscribed, please do click that subscribe button below and also click the bell so that you'll be notified for future videos and giveaways. So how many of you know this house, Wilhelm Parfumery? Do you own any of their fragrances? Let me know, put a comment down. And do you know about Jerome Epinay's fragrances? Are you a fan of his creations? Let me know. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started. And the first one I'm talking about at number seven, this is a top seven list, and it's ranked today, is the fragrance I reviewed. I have a full review of this one on the channel. It's Morning Chess. So the reason this is here is there's that familiar smell with this one, and I'm going to tell you what it is in a bit, but it's a crowd pleaser, this one. It's very, very fresh and citrusy with lots of green touches, eventually becoming a ambery, leather, woody kind of a composition. Uh, Morning Chest reminds me a little bit of Aventus. Yeah, it is that kind of a fragrance. It smells very, very fresh. It's very, very green and very, very citrusy. And it features notes of bergamot, galbanum, Tuscan leather, patchouli, black amber. And it's interesting that when I took the notes down from the Wilhelm Parfumery website, they, they mentioned Tuscan leather. And not referring to that fragrance, but Tuscan leather as in the type of leather comes from Tuscany, uh, which is uh, very, very well known for its leather. And you do experience the leather here, but it's more in the dry down. It's not up front, it's not up top or the heart. It just basically settles to a kind of a, you know, the, the, the leather and then the ambery touches. But you know, along the way, you've got lots of that bergamot and the galbanum. And the galbanum in here is really, really magic. And this is the note, this is the theme. There's a lot of galbanum that appears in these fragrances. And it's a note I really enjoy, but you know what? We're experiencing the galbanum's greenness, not necessarily it's, you know, bitter, well, you do experience some green bitterness in the fragrances as well, but not overdose of the bitterness with these fragrances. Great fragrance, but it is ranked at number seven because I find it to be the easiest to wear. And uh, it is a great smell, but I don't find it as uh, very, you know, really unique, like as in a smell. But it's a familiar smell, as I said. It does remind me of Aventus. That's why I'm ranking it at number seven. So number seven, Morning Chess. Let me know if you're familiar with that. It's definitely green and citrusy, very, very fresh and spicy. Okay, number six, it's Basilico and Fellini. Do you know this one? This is actually such a great basil forward fragrance. If you like the idea of basil, 
aromatic herbal basil and fragrances, you've got to try this one. So the last fragrance featured uh, galbanum. This one does not feature galbanum, but it is a very green fragrance. So I think the theme that I'm going to be uh, mentioning to you is that green theme. Almost every fragrance here, except for the a couple of them is very green. So if you like green fragrances, you definitely need to check this house out. Not everything is, but um, five out of the uh, the seven are very, very green to me. In fact, this is really, really green to me, and it features notes of basil, wild fig, dragon fruit, vetiver, green hay, and violet. So once again, it's an overdose of green basil. So it's very, very herbal and aromatic, but it's also very, very fresh. There's loads of freshness here, and I feel like there's a little bit of a citrusy touch, even though I didn't really read a citrusy touch. I think it could definitely have some bergamot in here to give it that kind of like citrusy freshness contrasted with the basil. But there is green fig in here. It's like a green wild fig, they call it, but it's, it adds more, uh, you know, uh, a li you know, it adds a little green touches, but it also adds a little fruitiness in here. There's a little bit of a fruity touch uh, in here. So is it coming from the dragon fruit? Is it coming from the, the fig? We're not really sure what they're using as a note. So there's lots of green here and of course green leaves, fig leaves. It's all very green contrasted with the aromatic basil. But you know, you've got the vetiver in here and you've also got this hay, the green hay note. So it's an overdose of green, fresh, uh, you know, grassy, aromatic uh, fragrance experience. It's really, really wonderful. If you like fragrances like Mandarin Basilique from Guerlain, which is you know, it's a mandarin orange and basil combo. Here, we don't have that mandarin orange familiarity smell. You've got some citrus in here, but I'm thinking it's like bergamot, but it's loads of basil. So if you like that basil, definitely check the, you know, the basil in this fragrance, Basilico and Fellini. Great name, by the way. Uh, so that's at number six. All right, at number five, going to Purple Fig, this one right here. Uh, how many of you have tried this one? If you like fig fragrances, definitely try this. It's a really, really wonderful green experience, but very, very figgy. A little vegetal in here as well with some of the notes, but it's an overdose of this green fig note with angelica, galbanum, cedar, vetiver, Sichuan pepper, jasmine absolute, cashmere wood. So there's a little bit of a floral touch in here, but that Sichuan pepper adds spiciness and a little citrusy touch as well. Lightly citrusy, a little lemony experience with this uh, Sichuan pepper because Sichuan pepper in the end has some t you know qualities that pink pepper has and also black pepper, but it's not as strong. And as I said, it's got this kind of citrusy lemoniness that's uh, unique for that particular uh, spicy note. And it's really, really wonderful here, contrasted with the green fig, because mainly we're speaking about figs with this one, but you have that vegetal, vegetal touch with the angelica, bitter greenness from the galbanum. There's lots of woods and grassiness here with the vetiver and the cedar. And of course, you have a little bit of a floral touch. Gorgeous scent, it's really, really great. This is a really wonderful figgy fragrance that I really really like. I love fig. I'm a Mediterranean guy and I love this kind of like green I guess woods and trees and uh, parks where all this vegetation grows. I like that kind of a smell and it's definitely captured here with this particular fragrance purple fig. So number five purple fig. But on the other hand, number four, for a tea experience, it's Dear Polly. Oh my god, this is really, really good. I did not realize this was tea until I smelled it once and I was like, wow, this is a really, really great tea fragrance. But once again, we've got green qualities here. This is another green fragrance. These four and then the next one, five, all have green touches, except for the first and the number one and number two are different kind of fragrances. But Lots of green fragrances here. And of course, as I said, galbanum appears as well. This one is definitely a Ceylon black tea or black tea experience. And you know, you've got this black tea experience here and it has a little bit of a smokiness which you experience throughout the freshness of this ex uh, fragrance experience. It's fresh tea and you know citrusy with that light smoke running throughout it which is kind of unique i like that about it because it adds a kind of like a depth to the fragrance rather than just being all freshness you know but this features loads of ceylon black tea bergamot apple black amber 
musk and oak moss. It's very, very fresh and citrusy, lots of tea. For me, you know, it acts like green tea, but it's definitely black tea because I don't find smokiness in green tea. I consume tea. I, I like tea a lot. Not as much as coffee, but I do drink lots of tea. And, you know, it acts a little bit like green tea, but it's definitely more black tea. And of course, black tea has the smokiness and it's definitely prominent here. I could also say a little bit of rubberiness as well, kind of, sort of very lightly, very minuscule, reminds me a little bit of something like Bulgari's Black. Uh, that's why I'm getting this kind of like rubbery smokiness. But it's very, very light. Uh, you might not even experience it, but I'm kind of hinted at it for some odd reason. But a great scent, really, really wonderful scent. A great tea fragrance experience, Dear Polly from Wilhelm Parfumery. And that's at number four. So let me know if you know these fragrances I've spoken about today so far from the house of Wilhelm Parfumery. Now this one I featured in a lilac fragrances video and it's absolutely amazing for a lilac fragrance. Yes, lilacs I guess I would assume would be leaning feminine, but this is a very, very green lilac experience. A lilac a day at number three, so good. Look at how much I've used. It goes down so good and it smells great. It's very, very fresh. Really, really invigorating, but it's lots of flowers with white flowers. And of course, uh, you know, it's a purplish flower, but it doesn't smell purple. I mean, I guess it does, kind of, sort of, but it's a very, very unique smell. And I love the smell of fresh lilacs. It's definitely captured here, but it's got notes of blue lilac, spring freesia, jasmine, galbanum, black amber, and rose. And there's that galbanum again. This is a very green experience for a white floral, purple, or lavender colored floral fragrance experience. But lots of freesia. Freesia is also another great uh, smelling flower. And the combination of the lilacs and the freesia together with the jasmine, top notch. And that galbanum adds this depth to the fragrance. The green touch kind of contrasts with the floral touches, the floral sea. Throw in some amber and rose, and I think it's definitely a great fragrance. I wish it was a little more umphir, but I think the fragrance will be ruined. There's this, uh, you know, ultra fresh quality about it, and I think that would kind of be removed if it had a little more depth or heft to the fragrance. So I think it's fine as it is, just over spray, but it's a fantastic smell. That's why it's at number three, a lilac a day from the house of Wilhelm Parfumery. Awesome fragrance, amazing smell, absolute love for that one. I love floral fragrances, and I think that's a very unique floral smell. Not a typical popular note, lilacs in fragrances. If you like the idea of lilacs, go catch my lilac fragrances video because I have a ton of lilac fragrances that I think are great, including that particular fragrance. So the next fragrance I'm talking about at number two is the Oud Affair. How many of you know this one? This was a love at first sniff when I first smelled it at Barney's several years ago when I first, uh, you know, tested it out there. You know, it does have a familiarity again. Uh, it does remind me a little bit of um, tobacco vanille, so it would be a great tobacco vanille alternative if you're looking for that. But this is a little different. It definitely has a little different. I'm going to tell you another fragrance it reminds me of as well. But the Oud Affair, it's Oud apparently, yeah, because it has this Oudy touch. And uh, I'm getting smokiness from this Oud, but it has tobacco leaves, agarwood or Oud, black vanilla, honey, ginger butter. Great smells, right? So for me, this reminds me of, well, let me say, there's a fragrance by Acro called Smoke. Acro by Smoke is, kind of reminds me of uh, tobacco vanille, but more resinous and more, lots of smoke, like ashy smoke. This has a little bit of ashy smoke, but more smoke, less ash. So it's a very unique experience in that it reminds me of tobacco vanille, but a lot ashier or smokier than tobacco vanille. Makes sense? So it's really, really delicious. It's sweet. It's got these sweet, spicy, warm touches that I really, really love. Lots of amber with honey. Very, very vanillic. And of course, this oud uh, kind of provides a kind of a smoky uh, woodiness in here that is a really, really fantastic smelling. Absolutely love this one. Yes, it does have that familiarity. It does remind me of tobacco leaf, I mean, vanilla, tobacco vanille, because it's got that familiar smell, but it's unique enough to uh, enjoy on its own. I, I wouldn't call it better than tobacco vanille. I just would think, you know, it reminds me of tobacco vanille, but yes, it's got this unique touch to it that I enjoy wearing it on its own, thinking, okay, this is a great original smell. Anyway, the Oud Affair at number two. Can you guess my number one? I've already spoken about this 
this recently on a channel and I instantly fell in love with this. Last September, I went and met with, uh, well, I visited my mom's uh, in the Central Valley and I know of a uh, Instagram, perfume Instagrammer near her. So I met with her and she brought some of her fragrances. She brought Poets of Berlin. And you know, where, where they live, it's very warm. And we sprayed this, it was like, wow, this is so good. It's a great smell, it's vanillic, and it comes alive in the heat. So this could have been a toss up between Poets of Berlin and the Oud Affair, but I put this one here because it was like instantly, like I love the way it smells. Uh, it smells really, really great, and it smells really rich and dense in the heat. Uh, really, really sexy as well. Apparently, this is a tribute to David Bowie, which I noticed was uh, written on their website, the Wilhelm Parfumery website. But the rest of the fragrances didn't have any kind of a note on there, which is kind of interesting, except for this one. But really, really a beautiful vanilla fragrance, but not syrupy sweet, like heavy, dense, like, uh, you know, thick, runny, you know, syrupy kind of experience. This seems a little more fresh, but heat kind of like makes it a little more syrupy sweet. Sweet. But it features blueberries, vanilla, sandalwood, vetiver, green wild orris, lemons. So there's that citrusy touch with the lemons in here, but a beautiful, beautiful fragrance. Again, it's a vanilla that's not overly intensely vanilla. There's some, you know, lightness about it. So I think people enjoy vanilla, but some people think some vanillas are really, really overwhelming too sweet and things like that. Whereas this one does get sweet, but I think it opens up and becomes sweeter when it's actually really, really warm outside, which I like. I like that part about it because it kind of is a different experience when it's cool outside compared to when it's warm outside. It becomes a lot more warm and ambery, vanillic when it's warm outside. And when it's cool outside, it's a little more, you know, it's cooler. It doesn't have that warm, spicy experience that I like in fragrances, but it's great. It's a powdery experience, very, very earthy, but sweet and aromatic with woodsy touches. And of course, that beautiful vanilla. Really, really great. Poets of Berlin, number one. Uh, and then that's uh, the last fragrance from uh, Wilhelm Perfumery I'm going to talk to you about. And as I said, I do have a discount code Perfume Guide 10 in the info box for Twisted Lily. You can go and check these out. They're samples. I think they have all kinds of sizes as well of these fragrances. In fact, the next fragrance I'm going to talk to you about after the Outro. Some of you like that word. Uh, you'll find out what it is and I'll show you that size. But either way, guys, let me know your thoughts on these fragrances. How would you rank these fragrances? Do you know this house? Do you like these fragrances? Or maybe you hate them, you don't like them. Let me know, put some comments down so I can find out. Either way, I appreciate you tuning in today to watch my top seven Wilhelm Parfumery fragrances video. If you have any questions or comments, please list below. Please like this video, please share it. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one, goodbye. All right, the bonus fragrance I'm gonna to talk to you about is a fragrance in the mini-sized bottle. This is it right here. This is a Wilhelm Perfumery Mini, uh, and it's Fleur Burlesque. Um, so this is an ultra floral fragrance experience with gardenias, jasmine, sandalwood, and amber. And this one's not green. As I said, the first five fragrances I discussed today are all green-leaning except for the last three. Uh, the Oud Affair, the Poets of Berlin, and now Fleur Burlesque. If you like white floral fragrances that go milky, lactonic, and creamy woody, this is definitely uh, one that you should try. It features gardenias, jasmine, sandalwood, and amber. So the combination, well, I've always said that white florals have a creaminess and a, you know, beautifully blended with sandalwood, which is also creamy, and then throw in that amber. So you have this kind of like a white floral combination. For me, it's more gardenias versus jasmine. Uh, and you can definitely smell the ja gardenia in this. Uh, it's major gardenia, but it's a contrast with the jasmine as well. But then you've got the woods with the, you know, sandalwood and that kind of like sweet, syrupy, ambery touches. This is a great scent if you like white florals. If you don't like white florals, definitely don't check this one out. But I actually have this tiny little bottle, as I said, and it's a great, great smelling a white floral fragrance. In fact, I recently, I recently introduced this to a friend she really went gaga over it. She really loves it and loves the idea of gardenias, jasmine, sandalwood, and amber. Anyway, Fleur Burlesque is the bonus fragrance that I'm talking about today from Wilhelm Perfumery. Thanks so much for tuning in and sticking around for that bonus fragrance. Have a good day. Goodbye.